Key Grade 24 Studios, in association with Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures Productions, are both proud to present Sodor's Last Stand. It was summertime on the island of Sodor, and things were going well. The trains were on time, and the passengers were mostly happy. However, the engines had quite a predicament on their hands. A few weeks earlier, there had been a terrible fire at the sheds. The engines had suspected that George the Steamroller had caused it, but they weren't sure. Instead of trying to salvage the remains, Sir Tom had decided just to rebuild them entirely. The engines agreed, but unfortunately this required a lot of work. Every day, wood and packages of wood appeared at the docks. The engines had to work very hard. Pa, said Billy, this is ridiculous. We didn't even start the fire, and Sir Topham is making us clean up the mess. Murdoch laughed. Pa, Billy, he said, you need to stop complaining. Sir Topham is a very nice man. You know what? He could have just trashed the remains of the sheds, and we would have all had to sleep outside. But he's nice, and he would never do that. Whatever, said Billy. I'm just tired of all this work. And he puffed away to the sheds with his log car. Murdoch laughed, and he too puffed away to the sheds with his packages. After many agonizing weeks, the sheds were finally complete, and they looked gorgeous. The engines were all very impressed. They took their respective spots at the sheds. Goodness me, said Percy. The sheds are so nice. And clean, said Gordon. And tidy, said James. And warm, said Edward. Sir Topham Hat walked over. I hope you are all very pleased with the sheds, he said. I even added two mini sheds over here so that more engines could sleep. And sidings over here, said Boko. These are wonderful, sir. Oh, no problem, said Sir Topham Hat. I'm glad that you like them. Anyway, he said, just remember, if you guys see George the Steamroller anywhere, please let me know. I haven't been able to find them, but I know he's here somewhere. I'm pretty sure he hasn't gotten off the island yet. So, remember, if you see him, let me know. And the engines agreed. While most of the engines had helped with the rebuilding process of the sheds, five troublesome diesels had not. Diesel, Airy, Bert, Dennis, and Frank were on strike, and they refused to help. Stanley came by one morning. Why can't you five just, just, well, help us, you know? Help with what? asked Bert. Help us with rebuilding the sheds. The sheds are already rebuilt, said Dennis. There's nothing to help with. Yeah, said Stanley, Step Stanley, but you didn't help us in the first place. And why do you guys get the new sheds? So Topham had to use the leftover burnt wood to build the new sheds. It doesn't matter, said Diesel. We claim this spot, and this is officially the Diesel sheds. Stanley was most upset, but he was but he decided it was wise not to argue, and he puffed away. You showed them there, boss, said Frank. Thank you, said Diesel. We must we must teach these steam engines that they do not own this railway, said Diesel. Yes, sir, said Dennis. I agree with you. Good, said Diesel. Now continue doing no work. Maybe if Sir Tom Hatt sees that we don't, that we aren't doing any work, he'll finally let us pull trains like the Express and the Flying Kipper. And the rest of the Diesels agreed. Sir Topham Hatt, in the meantime, however, didn't take any notice of the Diesels. Please don't worry about them, said Sir Topham Hatt. I can't really punish them since they're already sh sitting in the sh sheds over there. So, well, um, once they come out, I'll punish them for sure. Are you sure, asked Gordon. They're doing something very naughty, sir. Don't worry, said Sir Topham Hatt. When they decide to come out and be really useful diesels, then I will punish them. Does that sound good? All of the engines agreed, except Oliver. Oliver asked Sir Topham Hatt, is that alright? But Oliver was lost in his own thoughts. A few days earlier, he was pulling a train, when suddenly his brake van towed the coupling had snapped between, brake, between Toad and the rest of the train. Toad had ran, run down the line, but he had never been found. Don't worry, said Duck. Oliver, Toad will appear soon. But Oliver wasn't so sure. I miss Toad, he said sadly. All right, said Sir Topham Hatt. I know you're unfit to talk, he told Oliver. But does that sound all right with everybody else? Yes, sir, said the engines. All right, said Sir Topham Hatt. In the meantime, I must go to the mainland and talk with my banker. What for? asked Donald. Sir, the sheds are newly complete. I know, said Sir Topham Hatt, but building two new sheds isn't that easy, you know, and, well, it's not financially easy as well. Anyway, I must go to the mainland tomorrow and talk with my banker. But don't worry, I'll be back in a few days. Thomas, will you take me to the docks? Yes, sir, said Thomas. I would be glad to. And Thomas set off. Goodbye, everybody, said Thomas. See you soon. And Thomas puffed away. Now remember, Thomas, said Sir Topham Hatt, you are the controller. I am, said Thomas. Yes, that's why I put you in charge. I know you will keep this railway in one piece. Oh, thank you, sir, said Thomas. That is an honor, sir. And he rushed off to the docks. Thomas arrived in the docks in no time. Sir Topham Hatt stepped out. 
Thank you, Thomas, he said. You are a really useful engine. No problem, sir, said Thomas. Anyway, while I'm away, I want you to be the controller of the railway. Does that make perfect sense? Yes, sir, said Thomas. I will be the controller of the railway and Polanyi and Clarabelle. Oh, said Sir Thomas. I'm sorry, Thomas, but I would rather not you have pulled. I would rather have you not pull Annie and Clarabelle. Why? asked Thomas. They're my coaches. Sir, Sir Topham Hat laughed. I understand, he said. But since you are the controller, I want you to focus on your duty. Anyway, Toby will take them. Is that all right? Oh yes, sir, said Thomas. If Toby if Toby takes care of them, I know that they'll be in great hands. Thank you for being a really useful engine, Thomas. Said Sir Topham Hat again. Just then, his ship arrived. Ooh, said Sir Topham Hat. I mustn't be late. Goodbye, and he walked onto the ship. Goodbye, Sir Topham Hat. Said Thomas. Goodbye, Thomas. He said. Goodbye, Sir Topham Hat. Said Colin and Cranky. Goodbye, Cranes. He said. And Sir Topham Hat's boat floated away. All right, said Thomas. I'm the controller now. Hmm. What should I do? Just then, Cranky spoke. Hey, Thomas. He said. Maybe we should just make a quick run of the island before it gets dark to make sure that all the engines are in their sheds. Great idea, said Thomas. And he rushed away. It had been sunset when Thomas had dropped Sir Topham Hat off the, off of the docks. But when Thomas got onto the main line, it became very dark. Fog began to set in. Thomas could barely see where he was going in front of him. Ugh, said Thomas. I can't see a thing. Driver, I think we should turn around right now. You're right, said, said his driver. I'm pretty sure all the engines will be in their sheds. Don't worry, Thomas. The railway is in good hands. You're right, said Thomas. And he went down the line backwards. He came to the turntable in the yard. Which way should I go, said Thomas. The fog was so dense that he couldn't see which way was which. This way, said the, said the driver, and the turntable master turned Thomas to the wrong direction. The sheds were, were to the right, but Thomas was going to the left. All right, he said. I hope we get home soon. Now it's beginning to get a little chilly. Thomas puffed along the line and went across an intersection. He began to hear something very strange. Hmm, said Thomas. Do you hear that? Hear what? asked his driver. It sounds, it sounds like purring, as in a diesel, as in, as in a diesel engine, asked his driver. Yes, said Thomas. Hmm, I wonder what it is. But Thomas continued to go along the line. But when he got to the T-switch, he began to hear it again. It was much louder. Hmm, said Thomas. It's probably just Daisy playing a trick on me. Daisy, are you there? But Daisy was nowhere to be seen. Bother, said Thomas. Boko? Mavis? Salty? The purring began to go grow louder. Whoever's there, said Thomas. Stop! Just then, Thomas heard something he would never forget. The clank of metal. Ah, he yelled. He ran away. Diesel 10! And it was Diesel 10. He was sitting on top of Gordon's hill. I've got you now, you little puffball, he yelled, and he raced down the hill. Ah, cried Thomas. He was about to seek refuge at Ellsbridge Station, but when he turned, he just saw a stop sign. Bother, said Thomas. I can't go that way. Help! And he raced down the main line. Stepney, meanwhile, was at Ellsbridge Station, but the fog was so dense that Thomas couldn't see him. Thomas, he said, are you there? Just then, Diesel 10 raced by as well. Who was that? asked Stepney. He had never seen Diesel 10 before. Thomas raced through the quarry. Diesel 10 will surely scrap me if he catches me, said Thomas. I must outrun him. But Diesel 10 is faster and stronger than me. I don't know how I'll do it. Just then, he saw Diesel up ahead. Goody, said Thomas. Diesel and I can outrun Diesel 10 together. Excuse me, Diesel. I have a problem on my hands. And Thomas quickly explained what it was happening. But Diesel was not interested. Pa, he said. You steam engines have been in charge of the island for too long. Diesel 10 is my boss, and I am supposed to capture you. Ah, said Thomas. Please, please don't hurt me. And Thomas rushed away. Diesel began to laugh easily when Diesel 10 raced up. Which way did he go? That way, sir, said Diesel. And the two connected, and they raced after Thomas. Thomas was now very scared. Oh, bother, he said. What's happening? Sir Thomas had left me in charge of the railway, and now Diesel and Diesel 10 are after me. This is horrible. The fog was so thick that Thomas could not see where he was going, and nor could the signalman. He accidentally switched Thomas into a sighting. Hmm, said Thomas as he went around a bit. This seems strangely familiar. As he went under the bridge, Diesel 10 and Diesel went over him. There he is, said Diesel, after him, and they raced around the bend as well. I have to find some place to hide, said Thomas. Just then, through the fog, he could see some buffers. Buffers, said Thomas. Wait, those are, but soon, his brakes apply. I'm going to try and ta stop you, called his driver. No, cried Thomas, but Thomas couldn't stop. The rails were slick with diesel oil. What's diesel oil doing here, said Thomas. But before it was too late, Thomas crashed into the buffers and disappeared.
Diesel and Diesel 10 raced around the bend. They saw Thomas go through the buffers. Bother, said Diesel 10. I knew this would happen. I can go after him, sir, said Diesel. I know the way very well. Nah, said Diesel 10. Thomas isn't worth going through the magic buffers. Anyway, you go re you go take Arian Burr and round up the steamies. I'll convince the rest of the Diesels. Tell Norman to come guard this siding. From now on, the island of Sodor will be known as the Island of Diesels. Thomas raced through the buffers on the other side. My goodness, said Thomas. What just happened? I don't know, called his driver, but... But... We seem to have gone through those buffers, Thomas. Look, there's the end. I guess you're right, said Thomas. Hey, those those were the magic buffers. I knew it, but I didn't even know they existed. Don't worry, said his driver. We'll figure a way back. Just then, Thomas came to a fork in the road. Bother, he said. Which way should I go? I suggest we go back, said his driver. Thomas was about to agree when he saw two figures in the distance. Hello, said Thomas. Just then, he saw who they were. It was Lady... And Toad. Lady, called Thomas, and Toad, it's so nice to see you. As with you, Mr. Thomas, said, said Toad. Thomas, said Lady, what are you doing here? That's a good question, said Thomas. Um, well, I guess that Diesel 10 was chasing me, and so was Diesel, and I went through those, I went through the magic buffers on the Soto Railway and popped out here. Where am I? Silly, said Lady, you're on the magic railroad, of course. I even knew that when I arrived here said Toad. Oh, said Thomas, this makes much more sense now. Welcome to the Magic Railroad, said Lady. Thomas, it's so nice to see you, but what are you doing here? I was running away from Diesel and Diesel 10. I slipped on some oil and went through the buffers. Toad, what are you doing here? This is where I arrived, Mr. Thomas, he said. When I broke away from all of us train, I went down a hill, I around a bend, and then pop, I went through those buffers over there. Oh, said Thomas, I see. Well, Oliver will be glad to know that you're safe. Oh, yes, said Toad. Mr. Oliver, it's been a long time since I've seen him. I hope, I think he'll be very glad to see that I'm all right. He will, said Thomas. Anyway, lady, what are you doing here? This is the Magic Railroad. I have to stay here. You have to, said Thomas. Yes, said lady. I need to stay here in order to keep the railway alive. Thomas looked farther down the line, and he saw two sets of buffers. What are those for, asked Thomas. Oh, said lady, this one right here is to go to Shining Time and Muffle Mountain. And what's that one for? That one, said Lady, goes to the other railway. The other railway, said Thomas. Why is there a buffer to the mu why is there a buffer to the mu to the other railway? I don't know, said Lady. Uh, numerous years ago, the numerous years ago, every single railway on the uh, every single railway in the world, Thomas, used to have magic buffers. Really, said Thomas. Yes, said Lady. But over the years, they've been destroyed. This used to be this used to be an intricate system of buffers, Thomas. You didn't even know where you were going, but now it's just these three. Oh, Thomas, I don't know what to do. I'm trying to save the Magic Railway from falling apart, but I don't know. It's getting kind of scary. It is, said Thomas. Wow. I mean, I can't believe there's only three buffers left in the entire world. Me neither, said Lady. Anyway, I'm glad you've come, but what is Diesel 10 doing on your railway? I don't know, said Thomas. I think he's trying to take it over. Oh, I feel so silly, Lady. Sir Tomahat left me in charge of the railway, and Diesel and Diesel 10 take the chance to strike and take over. What am I supposed to do? First off, said Lady, you must go f back and confront Diesel 10. You must not let him take over the railway. You're right, said Thomas. I guess I better take Toad back, too. Oh, thank you, Mr. Thomas, said Toad. It would be nice to go back. Be careful, said Lady. I've seen Diesel 10 come through here a couple of times, and he's found some new friends. Thomas was confused. Diesel 10's come through here? Yes, said Lady. A couple of times. I guess he knows about the magic buffers, too. He travels from the other railway to the Soto Railway all the time. That makes total sense, said Thomas. Hmm. Well, I can't believe I didn't see this coming, but I guess I'll have to go back to the other railway. Be careful, said Lady. Those di those diesels are vicious. Lady asked Thomas, if you've seen so many, di so many of these diesels, why haven't you stopped them? Thomas said Lady, I'm a tiny tank engine, and they're big, strong diesels. Well, if I tried to stop them, I would be a heap of scrap right now, and Burnett would not be pleased. He would not, laughed Thomas. Well... Lady, thanks for warning me about all this stuff. It's time that I go now. I must go back and warn my other. I must go back and warn my friends about this. That's all right," said Lady. "I understand." Thomas was about to go through the buffers, but then he realized something. "Lady," he said, "come with me. I would love to, Thomas," she said, "but my home is here." "I know," said Thomas, "but it's only for, it's only just for maybe a couple of days." But Lady would not go. "Thomas, I'm the only thing that's keeping this magic railroad alive." "I see," said Thomas, "and if you leave." 
If I leave, well, all the all the buffers will disappear, and I'll be stuck on Sodor. Burnett will be wondering what happened to me. I see," said Thomas. "Well, um, lady, thanks for being a big help. And if you see any more diesels, let me know." "I will," said lady. "Stay careful, Thomas, and be sure to defeat those diesels for me." "I will," said Thomas proudly. He backed up to the other buffers. Oh, watch out, Mister Thomas," said Toad. "I don't want to go through there." "Neither do I," said Thomas. "We're going to go through those buffers." Oh, dear, said Toad, this will be frightening. Thomas began to reverse very quickly. Goodbye, lady, he called. Thanks for your help. No problem, no problem, Thomas, said lady. And be very, very quick about this, too. I will, said Thomas. And with that, Thomas and Toad raced through the buffers. One moment, Thomas and Toad were on the magic rail, and the next, they wished through the buffers back onto the island of Sodor. My goodness, said Thomas, what a bumpy ride. Indeed, said Toad. I never want to go on that again, Mr. Thomas. Don't worry, laughed Thomas. Hopefully we won't. Thomas began puffing down the line very slowly, but his wheels started to slip on the diesel oil. Huh, said Toad. What's this diesel oil doing here? Just then, it hit Thomas. This is from Diesel 10, said Thomas. This is how he's been getting to the island of Sodor. That makes total sense, Mr. Thomas, said Toad. Said Toad. Hmm, I can't believe I haven't seen this before. Me neither, said Thomas. Hmm, I'd best get started. As they went under the bridge, Thomas noticed that the sun was peeking over Gordon's Hill. Hmm, said Thomas. When I left the island of Sodor, it was nighttime, but when I returned, it's dawn, and I've only been on the Magic Railroad for a few minutes. Toad, the time on the Magic Railroad must be different than on Sodor. I think it is, said Toad. Just then, they came around a corner and saw an orange diesel. Thomas stopped very abruptly. Oh my goodness, he said. What's this diesel doing here? I don't know, said Toad, but we have to get past it. The in Thomas and Toad thought they were going to be caught for sure, but just then... The diesel made a weird sound. Ew. Ew. The diesel was sleeping. Thomas began to chuckle. Silly diesel, he said. And Thomas moved quietly past the diesel. He hoped that the diesel wouldn't hear him and Toad, but at last they were over the hill. Phew, said Thomas. That was awfully close. Indeed, said Toad. As Thomas puffed down the line, he noticed nobody was in the sheds. Hmm, said Thomas. Maybe Diesel, Larry, and Bert decided to do some work for once. He had completely forgot that they had tried to take over the railway. Thomas puffed past Ellsbridge Station. It was silent. Hmm, said Thomas. I thought the trains would be going this early in the morning. Me too, Mr. Thomas, said Toad. Hmm, I wonder what's keeping Gordon. He should be at Ellsbridge Station by now. Thomas agreed. As they puffed over Sodor, Thomas nor Toad could see any engines. Where are they? thought Thomas. Just then, through the morning fog, Thomas saw two black engines. They were Donald and Douglas. Hooray! cried Thomas. We found them! And he spun onto the turntable. Just then, through all the fog, he could see that all of the engines on Soda were here as well. They were all in the yard. My goodness, said Thomas. What are you all doing here? He puffed forward. The engines began to whistle. Hooray! they said. Thomas is back. Thank you, said Thomas. But what are you all doing here? He puffed over to where Gordon was. Hello, Gordon, said Thomas. Nice to see you here. But what are you all doing here? Huh, said Gordon crossly. Look who decided to show up, finally. Thomas was confused. Don't be mad at me, Gordon, he said. I've been on the Magic Railroad all night. Pa, said Henry. Nice little made-up story there, Thomas. No, said Thomas, it's true. And he explained what happened. Diesel 10 was chasing me, he said. And, well, I slipped on some oil by the track that Murdoch puts his good trains in, and I went through the magic buffers. Was Lady there? said Percy. Yes, said Thomas, and he explained that story as well. My goodness, said Toby. Thomas, you've had quite an adventure. Yes, I have, said Thomas, but I'm glad to be back on Sodor. Hey, why are you guys all just sitting around? Shouldn't you be trying to take the railway over from the diesels? At least you know that's happened, said Duck. What do you mean, said Thomas? Last night, said Henry, Diesel, Larry, and Bert came to the sheds and took all our coal. They shunted us into these sightings right here. Bother, said Thomas. I knew this was happening. Oh, if I had only come home a little bit sooner. Don't worry, said Percy. As soon as you left, Diesel, Larry, and Bert came to take our coal. Don't worry. It was far too late for you to help us. Thomas felt very bad. I'm sorry, you guys, he said. While you guys were being captured, I was on the Magic Railroad talking to the lady. Oh, I wish I could have done something. It's all right, said Mavis. But the Diesels have unfortunately taken over the railway. Then why are you in the yard, he said. He noticed that Boko, Daisy, Salty, and Mavis were sitting there. The reason, said Toby, is that they would not submit to Diesel 10. That's right, said Salty. Diesel 10 gave us the option to join his evil crew, 
but we four diesels decided against it. Don't forget me over here, said Derek. Yes, said Gordon, and Derek too. They were very brave, but Diesel 10 took all their oil as well. Cinders and ashes, said Thomas. This is terrible. Oh, I'm so sorry for not getting back sooner. Hey, and what are all these road vehicles doing here? These, said Duck, are road vehicles that wouldn't help Diesel 10 either. He took everything that they need to run, like gas for Bertie and Trevor and Madge and everybody else. An airplane fuel for Her Harold and Tiger Moth. Oh, bother, said Thomas. Hmm, this is a disaster. Sir Tom has left me in charge of the railway, and I've let it completely crumble. I'm sorry, you guys. It's all right, said Billy. I, we know what you are trying to do is very brave, Thomas, but you must help us. He asked it, Oliver. We're all out of coal. Hey, is that Toad? Yes, said Thomas. I found Toad. He was on the Magic Railroad. Everybody began to cheer at once. Hooray, called Oliver. Toad, I'm so glad to see you. As am I, Mr. Oliver, he said. It's nice to see you as well. Although I'd love to stay and chat, said Gordon. Thomas, you need to figure out what those diesels are doing. Yeah, said Trevor. It's not just Diesel 10, Diesel, Ari, and Bert anymore. It's the whole crew. The whole crew, said Thomas. Well, doesn't that just include Dennis and Frank? Oh, no, said Rosie. It's a lot more. What do you mean, asked Thomas. You see, said Henry, Diesel 10 has picked up a few more friends along the way. We started counting the diesels, and we realized that there's a lot. Like how many, asked Thomas. Well, said Toby, just to start... It's Diesel, Airy, Bert, Dennis, Frank, and Diesel 10, but he's also picked up some more friends. Splatter and Dodge were there last night. Thomas was utterly shocked. Splatter and Dodge, he said, but they were changing the Airy and Bert. That's what we were talking about, said Billy, but that's obviously not the case. I don't understand, said Thomas. I was there the night they were turned into Airy and Bert. This is impossible. Oh, said, it, said Toby, we believe it's impossible too, but we know for a fact Splatter and Dodge were there. So Splatter and Dodge and Airy and Bert are on the railway. Yes, said Toby. Thomas could not get his mind around that. That's ridiculous, he said. It is, said Stanley, but I, but I guarantee you that it's true. All right, said Thomas. What else? Well, said Percy, Spam Can and Bowler are back. Thomas could not believe his ears. Spam Can and Bowler, he said, but but we never knew what happened to them. Exactly, said Henry, and it looks like, they, looks like they've taken the chance to strike. I think Diesel Tenet recruited them somewhere along the way, said James. Thomas soon realized something. He explained the magic buffers to the other engines. There are magic buffers that go to Sodor and the other railway. Lady said Diesel 10's been traveling back on both, so Spam Can and Bowler were probably on the other railway, and Diesel 10 met them. That's the perfect explanation, Thomas, said Percy. Aha, said Thomas, I finally figured this out. Anybody else? Well, said Oliver, there is a strange orange diesel out there. He's very quick. Oh, said Thomas, I saw him, but I luckily got around him. Good, said Toby, he's fast, and if he saw you, he would likely catch you. Ooh, said Thomas. Sounds scary. Anybody else? There's this old blue engine as well, said Henry. We don't know his name, but hopefully we'll figure this out. Yeah, said Coley. Thomas, you need to go figure out what those diesels are doing. Exactly, said Gordon. We don't know where they are right now, but they are obviously aren't pulling any trains. If they don't get started soon, the passengers will be worried sick. All right, said Thomas. Where should they start? Try now for station, said Percy. While, D while Ari and Bert were shunting us into the yard last night, they talked about a meeting somewhere along here. Hmm, maybe they're there. That's a good place to start, said Thomas. All right, you guys, I'm going to leave Toad here for right now. I'll be back in a bit. Before Thomas left, Edward spoke up. Thomas, he said, how much coal do you have left? How much coal do I have left? Hmm, I don't know. His driver got out and checked. He has half a bunker full, he said. Edward looked very sad. Thomas, he said, "You, none of us have any more coal left. Oh, said Thomas. I realize that. Oh, well, I'm the only engine on Sodor that has coal. Yes, said Toby, but at the same time, Duck said no. What do you mean? asked Thomas. The reason is, yes, you are the only engine on Sodor that has coal. But unfortunately, Diesel 10 also recruited one steam engine. Thomas was confused. It's Spencer. Spencer, said Thomas. Oh, that stupid steam engine, said Thomas crossly. I'll get back in it for sure. Don't try to go at him, said Henry. Remember, Spencer's very fast, and if he sees you, he'll likely catch you. I think Diesel, I think Diesel, Arian Burton, has, and Spencer have been working on diesel, getting Diesel 10 to the railway, said Percy. That makes total sense, said Thomas. Oh, bother. Well, I'll go check at Napford Station, he said, and I'll see what's going up. Hey, normally we should be able to see across here, said Stanley, to Napford Station, but this fog is so dense that I can't. You're right, said Thomas. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go check out, I'm going to go check at Napford Station and see if they're there. Be careful, said Edward. Don't use up any coal that you don't need to. Go up hill slowly and coast down them. Yes, said Henry. Take the shortest way possible, Thomas. 
I will, said Thomas. I'm doing this for the island of Sodor. And as he puffed away, all the engines whistled. Go, go, Thomas, they yelled. Be a really useful engine. And Thomas promised he would. Thomas Thrupp puffed through Henry's tunnel on his way to Natford Station. I hope the engines are wrong, he said to himself. I really wish the diesels aren't here. But as he came over the hill, he was shocked. There were diesels everywhere. Thomas quickly ran down the hill and hid behind. Goodness me, said Thomas. What are so many diesels doing here? He peeked around the corner and could not believe what he saw. There were diesels everywhere. My goodness, said Thomas. I didn't know Diesel 10 had this, this many friends. Thomas surveyed Natford Station. Diesel 10 was in the middle, followed by Diesel. Spencer was off to the side. Thomas wanted to run up, run up and knock Spencer off the track. He was very mad at Spencer for betraying his fellow steam engines. And off to Spencer's side was Frank. Hmm, said Thomas. Frank must also be in charge here. Then he looked at the engines behind him. Ari and Bert were in front of Diesel. Splatter and Dodge were front in front of Diesel 10 and Spencer. Thomas could not believe his eyes. There, in one shot, were Ari and Bert and Splatter and Dodge. His eyes were not deceiving him. Wow, said Thomas. I cannot believe this. This is truly amazing. Thomas could not believe what he was seeing. I guess the workman lied to me, he said, but I was there the entire time. I guess I'll have to figure this out for myself. And in front of Frank, Thomas saw a very strange diesel he had never seen before. Behind the strange diesel was Dennis. Thomas was also mad at Dennis. And behind Splatter and Dodge were none other than Spam Can and Bowler. Thomas was also very mad at them. Bother, he said. They've wreaked havoc on soda for so many years, and now they've finally achieved it. Oh, if I ever get the chance, I'll get rid of them for sure. Not only were steam engines and diesel engines there as well, but there were also road vehicles. Thomas noticed that George and Bulgy were there as well. There's George, said Thomas. Oh, if only the other engines could see this. I found him, I found him. But he could do nothing right now. Then he saw Bulgy. Oh, dear, he said. Bulgy's been so kind in recent years. I can't believe he would submit to Diesel 10's EVDs, evil deeds, but I guess he has. Then off to the side were Max and Monty and Lori One. Bother, he said. I always knew those jumbled dump trucks were nothing but trouble. And leave it to Lori One to betray us all. Huh. I hope something bad happens to them. Thomas was about to run back to the yard to tell the other engines when Diesel 10 spoke up. Attention, everyone, he said. This meeting is now in session. The rest of the diesels quieted down. First off, he said, I would like to congratulate ourselves, ourselves on taking over the island of Sodor. It will now be known as the Island of Diesels. The diesels honked their horns very loudly, and Spencer whistled very loudly as well. Next on the agenda, he said, Unfortunately, as of right now, we can't get rid of the passengers. Aw, oh, man, said Spider and Dodge, we don't like pla passengers. I don't either, said Diesel 10, but in the meantime, we must continue to pull trains to, make, to let the passengers know that everything's all right. But it isn't, said Spencer. Be quiet, Spencer, said, said Diesel 10. I'll get to you in a sec. So, we must continue to pull trains. Somebody would like, would somebody like to take the express? We will, said Spam Cannon Bowler. That's a good two engines, said Diesel 10. Anybody would like to pull trucks? Nobody answered. But just then, Diesel 10, Diesel 10 spoke up. All right, he said. Frank and Dennis, you will pull trucks. Bother, said Frank. I didn't join this group to pull trucks. You joined this group, said Diesel, because you were loyal to Diesel 10. Frank felt very ashamed. Yes, sir, he said. Sorry, sir. Excuse me, said Spencer, but what may I pull? Ah, yes, said Diesel 10. Even though most of the, even though all of the steam engines on Sodor have no coal, Spencer agreed to be a part of our group. He has been plotting with, he had been plotting with Diesel in the coming months to allow me to come here. Let's please all toot our horns for, up for Spencer because he's a very great steam engine. But Diesel 10 did not mean any of that. The Diesels honked very loudly. Thank you, said Spencer. It is truly an honor to be in great company with Diesels like you. I always knew that those steam engines were wrong. You know, on my first railway, there was a steam engine that really bugged me. His name was... That is enough, Spencer, said Diesel 10 crossly. Anyway, so we have our assigned trains. Is that good enough? All right. Hmm. What else should we do? Diesel, any plans in mind? Uh, not really, sir, he said. But I do have an idea. Maybe we should just congr congratulate the road vehicles for sticking with us as well. Oh, yes, said Diesel 10. Thank you very much, road vehicles. You will help us get our jobs done as well. Bulgy, you will be able to take the passengers since that puny little br bus birdie didn't come with us. And George, you'll be able to do work along with Max and Monty. The diesels honked their horns. And Lori, you will be able to carry packages for us as well. 
Excuse me, said one of the new diesels, but is, uh, what's his phrase? Bullstrode still on our side? Oh, said Diesel 10. Yes, he is. Bullstrode is on our side as well. He will help deliver packages from the mainland. Any other questions? The diesels remained silent. Just then, coming down the line, was the orange diesel that Thomas had seen guarding the buffers. Excuse me, sir, he said. What is it, Norman? asked Diesel 10. I would just like to report that Thomas has yet to come back from the Magic Railroad. But Diesel 10 was not buying it. Pa, he said. Thomas knew what was expected from the Magic Railroad, he said. What does that mean? asked Diesel 10. It means that when Thomas went through the Magic Buffers, he knew that he only had to reverse to come back. Thomas must have come back. He wouldn't stay there that time. Thomas was beginning to feel very uncomfortable. As for you, Norman, you seem to have fallen asleep in the night. No, I haven't, sir, said Norman. I've been awake this entire time. I highly doubt it, said Diesel 10. I went past there last night, and you were sound asleep, snoring by the looks of it. Norman felt very ashamed. I I'm sorry, sir, he said. But really, an engine like me needs to get its sleep. So I guess that, well, Thomas is on the railroad. The engines were shocked. Outrageous, said Spencer. We must find him immediately. Yes, said Frank. We must. All right, said Diesel 10. The to those that I have assigned... Coaches and trains, please go do your work. The rest of us will begin to look for Thomas. And the diesels began to back away. Thomas realized that this was his cue to head back. Father, he said, this is worse than I thought it was. Diesel 10 not only has a couple of followers, but he has like a whole brigade with him. Hmm, I can't fight this on my own. I'll have to go do something else. But as he backed away, something very interesting happened. Spencer spoke up. Excuse me, sir, he said, but what train should I pull? But Diesel 10 just smiled. Spencer, he said, you gullible little engine, you're not pulling any trains. Spencer was confused. What do you mean, sir? Splatter began to move toward him. Spencer felt, Spencer began to feel very, very weird. Uh, sir, he said, not really. Spencer began to back up as well. But soon he was out of coal. What's the matter, asked Spencer. You're out of coal, he said. Oh, dear, said Spencer. Hmm, I don't know what I'll do. Diesel 10, can you give me some more coal? But Diesel 10 just laughed. There is no more coal on the island, he said. Spencer, I'm sorry to say, but you will not become part of the diesel crew. Bother, said Spencer. I knew I couldn't trust you, Diesel 10. This is all too real to be true. Splatter laughed. Time to go to the scrapyard, he said. No, cried Spencer. I can be very useful. And with that, Splatter took Spencer away. Thomas was shocked, and so were the other diesels. My goodness, sir, said Spam Can. That was quite... Uh, what's the word? Brave of you to do. But Spencer was going to help us with the steam engines. All the steam engines are out of coal, said, S said Diesel 10 very crossly. He is not a help to us anymore. Spencer will be scrapped. Wow, said, said the new Diesel. That's quite harsh, sir. It's what we have to do to make sure that nobody betrays us, he said. Now off, you engines, he said. Go find Thomas. Thomas realized this was his cue. I better get going, he said. I don't want any diesels finding me. And with that, he raced back through Henry's tunnel. He raced into the yard a few minutes later. I have to let the other engines know, said Thomas. This could be very, very bad indeed. But before he even got to the yard, he was shocked to find Spencer there. Spencer, said Thomas, what are you doing here? Spencer was also surprised. Thomas, he said, what are you doing here? I was wondering what you were doing here, said Thomas, because I saw you at Natford Station. Splatter said he was going to scrap you. Spencer was shocked. Thomas, you were listening? Thomas didn't have time to explain. Never mind, he said. It's all said and done. No, it's not, said Spencer sadly. They're going to scrap me for sure. Thomas, wait, come back. But Thomas was already puffing away. He did not trust Spencer at all after what he'd done. Thomas arrived in the yard a few seconds later. All the engines were there. Thomas, said Duck, it's nice to see you. Thank you, said Thomas, but I have to tell you guys something. What is it, asked Toby. You guys were right. The Diesels did indeed meet at Natford Station, and they assigned jobs and everything. Worst of all, they're looking for me. Cinders and ashes, said Henry. This is worse than I could have thought. Me too, said Gordon. This is terrible, Thomas. You need to find a place to hide. Indeed, said Percy. Go, go, go. I know, said Thomas, but I don't know where to hide. Don't think about where to hide, said Duck. Just hide now. I think I hear some Diesels coming. And he was right. Thomas, said Edward. How much coal do you have left? Thomas's driver got out and checked. He only has a quarter bunker left, said his driver. Oh, bother, said Billy. Thomas, you're almost out of coal. This is terrible, said Salty. I don't know how you're going to make it through the rest of the day. Me neither, said Thomas. But right now I just need to focus on finding a hiding spot. You can hide in the tunnel back here. 
That would be a great idea, actually, said Thomas, but just then that diesel's horn sounded. Oh, bother, he said. I don't have time to stay here. Goodbye, guys, and I promise I won't waste as much coal. Be careful, said Duck. If the diesels catch you, they'll surely do something with you. I know, said Thomas, but I must find a place to hide now. Wait, Thomas, said Spencer. Wait, I need to tell you something. But Thomas did not wait. You're a lying little li you're a lighting you're a lying little loser, Spencer, he said. I will never trust you again. But wait, Spencer, there's just a tiny bit of coal left in my in my tinder. You can have it. Are you sure? said Thomas. Yes, I'm no use now. My fireman will give it to you. Spencer only had a few lumps of coal left, but it definitely made a difference. Thomas's fire was roaring in no time. Thank you, Spencer, he said. I'm sorry I was rude to you. I deserve it, said Spencer. But run, quickly. I see Bowler coming. Yes, said Ben. His bam cam's coming too. Oh, all right, said Thomas. I'm coming. Don't worry. I'm going away. Don't worry. And with that, he was off. For the rest of the day, Thomas had to duck and weave wherever he went. When he saw a diesel coming down the track, he would have to quickly find a place to hide so that he wouldn't be caught. Phew, said Thomas. That was close. I don't know how long I can keep this up. I don't know how long you will keep this up, said his driver. Thomas, you're burning a ton of coal. You need to find a permanent hiding spot. You're right, said Thomas. I can't f hide anywhere on the main line. Otherwise they'll, otherwise, they'll see me. Hmm. If only there was a siding I could hide in. Just then, his driver looked over. Thomas, he said, hide in the siding where the magic buffers are. Now, why would I do that, said Thomas. That's, that's actually the perfect place to hide, he said. Yes, it is, said the driver. The diesels already think and know that you're on the railway, so now why not hide by them? They'll never look there. An excellent idea, driver, he said, and Thomas looked around the bend. He made sure to stop early so that he wouldn't slick, slip on the diesel oil. He didn't want to slide through the buffers again. All right, said Thomas, this will do for right now, but I don't know how long it will be before a diesel comes. Don't worry, said his driver. Hmm, Thomas, it's almost getting late. I'm going to take a quick nap in case we have to move during the night. You're right, said Thomas. I should probably take a nap, too. And with that, Thomas and his driver were soon asleep. They awoke when it was got dark. All right, said Thomas. Driver, let's go. All right, said his driver. We're off. And remember, Thomas, don't burn that much coal. I won't, said Thomas. I know I don't have that much left. I'll be re very resourceful when it comes to making sure my coal lasts. And he was away. I need to go find Diesel 10, he said. I want to confront him and wonder why he's doing this. Thomas stopped by the old sheds, but nobody was there. Hmm, said Thomas. I don't know why I even looked here. But of course they're going to be at the new sheds. Why would they want to sleep in these stingy old things? All right, said his driver. Let's go, but don't burn that much coal. I know, said Thomas. I'll be good. And with that, he was off. Thomas moved slowly through the night. Just like he had predicted, he found the diesels at the new sheds. They are having a riving discussion about the sorts. Hmm, said Thomas. I wonder what they're all doing here. Sleeping, laughed his driver. Thomas, even I knew that. Oh, of course, said Thomas. It's pretty late out. I wonder why they haven't gone to sleep. That's a good question, said his driver. They're probably enjoying the new sheds that Sir Topper has built. You're probably right, said Thomas. Hey, do you see Diesel 10 anywhere? No, said his driver. I haven't. They looked hard into the night, but they did not see the diesel with the claw anywhere. Hmm, said Thomas. I wonder where they could be. I don't know, said his driver. We'd better check someplace else. You're right, said Thomas, and he backed away down the track. He looked all over the main line, but Thomas could not find Diesel 10 anywhere. Bother, said Thomas. Oh, I tried so hard at everything, but now it's just gone all wrong. Driver, how much coal do I have left? His driver looked in the bunker. Thomas, this is your last scoop. The fireman just put it into your fire. We have to head home to the yard. You don't want to be stuck out on the main line when the diesels come by with their trains tomorrow. No, I don't, said Thomas. Oh, I'm so sorry, driver and fireman. I've just been a total failure to the railway. Failure, said the, said the fireman. Thomas, you're an inspiration. You're a hero. You're standing up against the diesels. Yes, said Thomas, but I'm out of coal. That doesn't make me a hero. Oh, I guess I just better head back. Just then, however, he heard the clank of metal. Thomas looked past the Sodor Bay Bridge and saw Diesel 10 heading into a shed. That's Spencer's shed, he said. It makes sense, said his driver. With Spencer out of the way, Diesel 10 can have his own shed. I wonder why he doesn't want to hang with the other diesels, asked Thomas. Huh, said his driver. I've been around diesels before, and they smell awful. No wonder Diesel 10 doesn't want to be around them. You're right, said Thomas. Those low-class diesels are nothing compared to high and mighty Diesel 10. You're right, said his driver. Well, anyway, Thomas, at least we know where Diesel 10 is staying at night. I guess that's all right, said Thomas. I just wish I could be more useful. You've done enough said his driver. Sir Topham Hat will have to deal with the diesels when he gets home. All right, said Thomas. We should go now. 
But as Thomas was backing up, something else, something happened. He wheezed very loudly. Driver, he said, stop that noise. I can't, said his driver. That means you're out of coal, Thomas. Oh, dear, we're stuck on the main line, too, and right by Diesel 10. That was a very loud noise, said Thomas. Hope Diesel 10 didn't hear it, but unfortunately, he did. He opened his eyes and, and came out of the shed. Aha, he said, there's the blue puffball, and look who he's with. Thomas was very incruised. Very confused. Look who he's with, he thought. There's nobody here. Just then, down the line, he saw Lady. Lady, he gasped. What are you doing here? No time to explain, Thomas, he said. I must go. All right, said Thomas. Go, go, go. And with that, they rushed away. It took a while for Diesel 10's engine to get started, but he was also coming down the line. You won't get away this time, he said. I'll make sure of it. And he was soon chasing after them. Lady, said Thomas. What are you doing here? It's a long story, said Lady. I'm sorry, Thomas, that I lied to you. Lied to me, said Thomas. What happened? Well, said Lady, I told you that I couldn't come back onto the Soto Railway because the magic railroad would perish. Yeah, said Thomas. What's the big deal? Well, actually, I can go wherever I want. I was just too scared. Oh, it's all right, said Thomas. Sometimes engines get scared, but I'm glad you come back, Lady. I'm out of coal. Bother, said Lady. Hmm, I guess I'll just have to puff around Soto until we lose Diesel 10. Fog was beginning to set in. Yes, said Thomas, that would be the best idea. Look, here he comes. He's catching up. And indeed he was. I've got you now, he said. You won't get away. Oh, yes, we will, said Lady. Thomas, you know your way around the island the best. Tell me where to go. All right, said Thomas. Go underneath Gordon's Hill. All right, said Lady. I'm doing so, and with that, they charged underneath. You won't get away this time, said Diesel 10 for the third time. I'm coming to get you. And he raced away. For the rest of the night, Lady puffed as hard as she could. Goodness me, Thomas, she said. You're quite a heavy, heavy engine. Not as heavy as I used to be, said Thomas. I'm out of coal. Why are you out of coal? asked Lady. Thomas explained the situation. So Diesel 10 has taken over the railway, said Lady. Oh, bother. Thomas, I'm sorry I didn't come sooner. That's all right, said Thomas. At least you're here now helping us. Just then, Thomas could barely see through the fog, but it was definitely Diesel 10. Aha, he said. There you are. Bother, said Lady. Thomas, I've been running around all night. And indeed she had. It had been sunset when they had taken off from Diesel 10, and now it was dawn. Ladies' wheels were very tight. Thomas, I don't know how much farther I can go. That's all right, said Thomas. Just try your best, lady. Sir Top of Hat gets back this morning, and when he gets back, we can he can deal with Diesel 10. Diesel 10 was coming around the bend. I've got you now, he said. Oh, bother, said lady. This will never end, will it? I doubt it will, said Thomas. Try to get back to the yard where the other engines were. Okay, said Lady. I'll try my best. And they were off. But there was soon trouble. Diesel 10 was catching up very quickly. Faster, Thomas called to Lady. Faster, Lady, faster. I can't, she called back to Thomas. Thomas, I've been running around the island of Soda all night, and my wheels ache. Plus, I'm almost out of water and coal. Cinders and ashes, thought Thomas. Oh, well. I mean, I guess we're going to have to go back to the yard as quickly as possible. Yes, said Lady. We're going to. And she headed up the viaduct. This is the quickest way, said Thomas. It's downhill from here. Once they reached at the top of the viaduct, they thought they were safe. But they were wrong. Coming around the other end were Bowler and Spamkin. Uh huh, said Bowler. Look what we have here. Two stowaways, by the looks of it. I wonder what they're doing here. I don't know, said Spamkin. But hopefully the boss will be very happy to see them. And Diesel 10 was. Thank you, Bowler and Spamkin, for helping me capture these two. I've been chasing them all night. You two are very, two very useful diesels. Thank you, they said. Lady scooted to the edge of the viaduct. Stop, called Diesel 10. Don't go any farther. The two engines sighed. They were trapped, and they had no place to go. I'm sorry, Lady, for getting us into this, said Thomas. I didn't mean to. I was just trying to be a really useful engine. You're, all, you're always going to be a really useful engine, Lady said to Thomas. Don't worry. Things will turn out well in the end. Now, Lady, Diesel 10 told her, uncouple yourself from Thomas. Thomas's driver got out, and the engines were soon uncoupled. All right, said Lady. Now, Lady, I am going to move slowly towards Thomas and couple myself to him. If you make any movements toward him, I will throw Thomas off the viaduct and have him scrap. Do you understand? Yes, sir, said Lady. She was very frightened. Don't come anywhere near, near me, said Thomas. Things will turn out right in the end. I hope so, said Lady. Diesel 10 began to move across the viaduct, but soon there was trouble. The foundation was starting to crumble. A brick was sliding out of place. Cinders and ashes, thought Thomas. Look, lady, it's sliding out of place right there. You're right, said lady. I hope Diesel 10 hasn't seen. 
and he hadn't. He was too focused on getting closer to Thomas. But Bowler and Spam King had, I'm getting out of here, said Bowler. I don't want to be anywhere near this when it falls. And the two rushed away. Wait, called Diesel 10. Come back here. Ugh, I knew those two couldn't be trusted. Stay still, Thomas. I'm almost there. It's not like I'm going anywhere, said Thomas crossly. I'm out of coal. Diesel 10 laughed. Of course you are. As Diesel 10 moved toward Thomas, the brick finally slid out of place. Thomas was now dangling precariously on the viaduct. There was nothing under him. From the impact, Lydia had sped forward, and Diesel 10 had also run down the track. It was now a race to see who would get to Thomas first. Would it be Lady, or would it be the evil Diesel 10? Lady was the closest. I'm coming, Thomas, she said. She raced over to try and help him. No, said Diesel 10 as he raced up to the top. Lady, stop. Now. Lady stopped. Now go get Thomas. Lady was surprised. But why? She asked. She couldn't simply understand why Diesel 10 was having to do this. Because, said Diesel 10, look, there's nothing under Thomas. Once you go over there, hopefully you'll both fall off the track and I can scrap you together. Lady realized that this was not a gift, but simply a curse. Bother, she said. Thomas, I'm sorry if I make you... I'm sorry if I make the track fall. It's all right, said Thomas. I'm sorry for putting you in this situation. It's all right, said Lady, and she began the back closer and closer. Soon they were coupled. Now back this way, said Diesel 10. Down the side over here. Follow me. But I can't, said Lady. Diesel 10, look. The track right there. It's uneven. I can't go up that, but I can easily pull Thomas off this way. Diesel 10 saw that Lady was right. All right, he said, but I don't expect you to run off anywhere. But of course they were going to. Lady began to pull Thomas off the track, but Diesel 10 soon realized something. Thomas was the only thing keeping Diesel's 10 track level. As Thomas was pulled off, the track over here began to rise. Oh no, cried Diesel 10. Thomas, stop, stop. The track began to, begin, began to bend lower. Go, Lady, go, he said. And with that, Lady and Thomas were safe. In the meantime, however, there was more trouble. Diesel's 10 bent track was now acting as a slingshot. Oh no, said Diesel 10. He raced down the track, but it was too late. The bent track swung up into the, the bent track swung up to the air, and Diesel 10 was thrown across the island. Ah! He yelled. That morning, Splatter and Dodge were filling up on the at the oil depot. Suddenly, they heard a noise. Hey, said Splatter. Do you hear that? Yeah, I do, said Dodge. Do you know what it is? Listen, said Splatter. Ah! Hey, it sounds like Boss. And right beside him, Diesel 10 landed. Wow! Oh! Ouch! Hey, boss, said Splatter. He could see the remains of the viaduct in the distance. Did you do that on purpose? Yeah, said Dodge. Did you do that on purpose? But Diesel 10 did not respond for a while. Finally, he said, No, I did not. The engines were shocked. Oh, well, they said. Uh, we're gonna go get the breakdown train, sir. Yeah, we're gonna go. And they were off. Hurry, said Diesel 10, before Sir Topham Hack gets back. But the Diesels didn't get the chance. A few minutes later, Sir Topham had arrived back from the mainland and soon set everything in order. Although he was although he was very surprised to see the railway in control of the Diesels, he quickly confiscated all of the oil on the island, and they soon ran out. Sir Topham Hat rounded up the best of them and was prepared to send them through the magic buffers. Why the magic buffers, sir? asked Thomas. I will let the other railway deal with them, said Sir Topham Hat. Anyway, off you go now. The first diesels that Sir Topham Hat sent through the buffers were we wanted were two of Diesel 10's friends. They were later to reveal to be Norman and Sidney. Huh, said Sidney. About time that we got out of here, I say. Agreed, said Norman, and they were away through the buffers. The next two diesel two diesels to go were Spankant and Bowler. Sir Topham Hat spoke severely to them. I hope I never see you two on my railway again, said Sir Topham Hatt. I don't know what it is with you, but you can just not leave the Sodor Island alone. Do you hear me? Yes, sir, said the Diesels very quietly, and they trundled off toward the buffers as well. Next up were Splatter and Dodge. Sir Topham Hatt had never seen these two Diesels before, but Thomas and Lady quickly filled them in. Aha, said Sir Topham Hatt. I see. Even though you two seem like hard-working Diesels, unlike Aryan Bird over there, I would be glad to keep you on my railway. Really? said Splatter. That'd be awesome, sir. But unfortunately, since you helped take over the railway, I must send you through the buffers as well. Although, I would like to have you on my railway sometime. Really? asked jo Dodge. No, said Sir Topham Hat. Sorry. Off you go now. I knew he was tricking us the entire time, said Splatter. No, you didn't, said Dodge. You fell for it as well. 
The two were arguing when they went through the buffers. And last but not least was Diesel Ted. Sir Topham Hatt gave strict orders to Diesel Ted. Diesel Ted, he said, I never want you to see, I never want to see you on my railway again. And if you do show up, I will take the personal time out of my day to go to the smelter's yard and scrap you. Do you understand? Yes, sir, said Diesel Ten. Diesel Ten was heavily beat up from the from the launch he had taken. He had gone halfway across the island and had miraculously stayed in one piece, but he was heavily damaged and hobbled towards the buffers. Hooray! cried Thomas and Lady. Diesel Ten's going away away, and they whistled very loud loudly. Pa, said Diesel Ten. I'll get all of you one day, he said. I promised, and with that he was through the buffers. Unfortunately for the for Thomas and Lady, they cannot prove to Sir Topham Hatt that Diesel, Harry, Bert, Frank, and Dennis had been directly in, had been directly involved. He tricked us, said Diesel. I told him to stop, but he didn't listen. Is this true? said Sir Topham Hatt. Absolutely not, sir, said Thomas. Diesel and Diesel Ten chased me, and they That's enough, Thomas. I will allow you five to stay on the island. But I expect you do I expect you to do some work from now on. Will you do that? Oh yes, sir, said Diesel. I promise, sir. And by the way, Diesel Ten tricked us. We never agreed to this. I'm sure, said Sir Topham Hatt. I will be keep, keeping a very close eye on you. Off you go now. And the five Diesels trundled away. Up next were the road vehicles. Sir Topham Hatt could believe that Lori, Max, Bulgy, and Monty had been had joined Diesel Ten's forces. But Thomas and Lady could not prove to him that they had actually been involved. Where did you see these guys at? asked Sir Topham Hatt. They were at Knapford Station, sir, said Thomas. I swear they were. I agree with you. I believe you, said Sir Topham Hatt. But until now, I will let them stay on the railway. But just like the Diesels, I will be keeping a very close watch on them. Lori, I want no trouble from you anymore. Yes, sir, replied Lori. Max and Monty, you will work hard. Do you, want, do you understand? Yes, sir, they said. And Bulgy, I put you back in the business, and I'd be glad to turn you back into a hen house. Do you understand that you must work hard? Yes, sir, said Bulgy. But although they didn't really mean it. All right, said Sir Thomas Hatt. That's settled. Oh, and look who we have here. Madge had found George. I was pretty easy to see him, said Madge, with that bright yellow funnel of his. Be quiet, said George. George, said Sir Thomas Hatt, I am very disappointed in you. I brought you to the island so that you would be a useful steamroller, but you've been the exact opposite. As your punishment, I will send you away. Send me away, sir, said George. Isn't that a bit, um, um, extreme? No, said Sir Tom Hatt. Being extreme, being extreme as if you burned down my sheds, said Sir Tom Hatt. I will never forgive you for that. You must go away now and be a and be a useful steamroller somewhere else, or a troublesome one, said Madge. Fine, sir, said George. But you won't get away with this. One day these rails will become roads. Roads will rule. You'll see. But Madge quickly took George away. Well, that's done and settled, said Sir Tom Hatt. Thomas and Lady, we must go to the yard and give the other engines their coal. Does that sound good? Yes, sir, they said, and soon they were off. The engines in the yard were very glad to have their coal back, and they were soon puffing all over shoulder, getting their jobs done. The viaduct was also complete in one day, and Stanley was very excited. Hooray, he said. It's finally to get out of the yard for once and stretch my wheels. Indeed, said Henry. It's great to be an engine on shoulder. And the two puffed away. The passengers were also very happy to have the steam engines back in control on the island. Thank you, Gordon, they said the next day. You pulled the express very well, even better than Spam Can and Bowler. Of course I did, said Gordon. I always pull some, I always pull my trains better than Diesel's. And the passengers and him started to laugh. Lady even stayed for a few days after Diesel 10 had gone home. She was a very useful engine, and even pulled trains once in a while. But unfortunately, Lady could not stay forever. One day, her and Thomas were talking. The sun was beginning to dip below Gordon's hill. Lady finally spoke up. Thomas, she said, it's time for me to go home. Go home, said Thomas. But, Lady, you just got here. Thomas, I know you would love for me to stay on the Isle of the Soda forever, but I must go back to the Magic Railroad. Burnett will be worried sick about me. Thomas laughed. I suppose you're right, he said. Burnett is the kind of guy that would, that would be worried sick about you. Well, Lady, thank you for saving the railway. I didn't save the railway, said Lady. You did, Thomas. That's why you're the number one engine. No, said Thomas. You saved the railway. You got me away from Diesel 10 when I ran out of coal, and you were brave to go get me when I was stuck on the viaduct. Thank you, Lady. You're welcome, said Lady. I guess we both saved the railway, didn't we? You're right, said Thomas. Lady looked at Gordon's Hill. All right, Thomas. It's time that I go. 
Lady spun around on the turntable and began to puff toward the magic buffers. Thomas quickly followed her. Will you come back sometime? He asked politely. Of course I will, said Lady. It's not like I'm leaving forever. I'll be back soon enough, she said. All right, said Thomas. Lady, thanks for your help again. No problem, said Lady. It's what friends do anyway, right? Right, said Thomas. And with that, Lady puffed toward the buffers. Thank you, Thomas, she said, for your help. No, said Thomas. Thank you for your help, Lady. You truly are a magical engine. And with that, Lady went through the buffers. Thomas was sad to see her go, but he knew that Lady would return when the time was right. Some day, when he, some days when he was pulling Annie and Clarabelle, he would look at the buffers longingly and want it and wish that Lady would come out of them. But like Thomas said before, Lady will return when the time is right. Time is right, isn't that right? And everybody knows, including you, that he is right.